Welcome to our session today on Knowing Your Rights. Uh, it's a webinar that's been designed to deliver some key advice on going to a protest. Um, I think some of you might have been expecting Suresh Gover. Obviously, I'm not Suresh Gover, um, but I will be leading the session and Suresh will be back at 3.30 uh, to be delivering the session on strategies for resistance uh, tomorrow at 3.30. And we'll link it in the Facebook comments below and you can register through that link. Uh, my name is Kolsoom Jaffrey, and I'm part of the steering committee for Labor Against Racism and Fascism. Uh, I also am an organizer with TWT and the IWGB Union. Um, so in today's session, we'll be discussing knowing our rights when it comes to going on protests, which is especially relevant now, obviously, um, whether you're going on a demo for Black Lives Matter, um, for uh, ACORN or your renters union, um, we need to be knowing our rights when we're out there fighting for what's right. Um, so first off, when it comes to stop and search, remember uh, no personal details. You don't need to give any personal details. Uh, you are not required to give your personal details under any stop and search power. Police forces are only required um, to record seven items of information uh, collected during a stop and search. And these are ethnicity, grounds for the search, object of search, identity of the police officer, date, time, and place, and that's it. You do not need to assist them by providing any more information. So we suggest that you stay silent. Um, this is the advice from Green and Black Cross's website, and we'll share a link in the comments to that. So key advice uh, when going on a protest. So you're heading out on a protest, uh, definitely take a read of GBC's key messages, uh, which we will link and download a copy of GBC's latest bus card. Uh, we suggest that you take note of our arrestee support number and of a criminal solicitor with protest experience. Um, so the arrestee support number we'll post in, in the comments is 07946-541-511. And make sure you write this number down on something the police will struggle to take from you, uh, like an arm or a leg. I mean, they might try, but it'll be a little more difficult than, uh, than having it written down on a piece of paper or something. Um, and then also write down the number of a solicitor with protest experience, and we're going to link a few of these in the comments as well. So two numbers to write down on your arm or leg, the arrestee support number, and uh, the number of a solicitor with protest experience. So our key messages, um, we're going to break these down a little bit in more detail, but our key messages that we'll discuss today are uh, no comment, no personal details, no duty solicitor, no caution, what power, no comment. So um, now we're going to dive in and break these down into a bit more detail. So first off, you do not need to answer police questions, so just don't. Uh, this is for your own protection and for the protection of others. The police are going to try to pressure and deceive you into incriminating yourself uh, and instead, um, instead of trying to decide what seems safe to answer, just say no comment to all questions during informal chats in the police van um, and especially during interviews. So if your friend in the next cell knows you aren't going to talk, they will feel better able not to talk themselves. Remember, interviews only help the police they will not interview you if they already have enough evidence uh, to charge you. There are two main exceptions to this. So the first one, if you've been arrested and taken to the police station, you may wish to give your name, address, and date of birth at the custody desk to speed your release. Uh, under recent changes, the police are also entitled to ask your nationality, but only after the arrest, and only if they have good reason to suspect you are a foreign national. So a good solicitor will sometimes suggest that you make a prepared statement in an interview. In that case, you or your solicitor will read the statement and you should answer no comment to any more questions. For longer discussion, the booklet No Comment, which is produced by the Legal Defense um, and the, monitor, the Monitoring Group, is excellent and we'll share the link to this in the comments as well. So basically, remember, no personal details. You do not have to give any personal details under any stop and search power, so don't. On protests, the police often use searches as a way of finding out who is present, both for intelligence purposes and to intimidate you. 
Uh, police also use arrest as a means of gathering information, particularly when they arrest a large number of people together, um, such as in a mass arrest. In a mass arrest. So you do not have to give your personal details to the police at any point during the arrest process. In fact, you're not legally required to give any personal information until you appear in court. So we would recommend not giving personal details to the police for as long as possible. For information on why, uh, see the page, do I have to give my details, um, which we'll post uh, in the comments as well. So no duty solicitor. Uh, so we recommend you use um, a solicitor with protest experience and we'll link to Netpaul's list in the comments. The duty solicitor is a solicitor who is present at the police station. They may come from any firm of solicitors, which means they almost certainly know nothing about protest. Duty solicitors often give bad advice to protesters, so we recommend you always use a good solicitor who does know about protests. Okay, uh, the next thing we'll talk about is no caution. So cautions are basically an admission of guilt. So offering you a caution is a way for the police, um, a, you know, to uh, the police to ask you to admit guilt for an offense without having to charge you. So it's an easy win for the police, and as they don't have to provide any evidence or convince a court of your guilt. So at the very least, you should never accept a caution without taking advice from a good solicitor. Next thing we'll talk, talk about is what power. So ask what power to challenge the police to act lawfully. Some police officers rely on you uh, not knowing the law. So if you're asked to do something by a police officer, ask them what power, i.e. what law they are using and uh, why they're using it. Make note of what was said and by whom, uh, numbers, and as soon as possible afterwards. Don't let them turn this into a situation where they ask you questions. Just walk away once you have your answer and remember, no comment. The following advice is also from the Green and Black uh, Cross website. So um, the question is, when can I be stopped? Uh, so let's go through the powers to stop. The police might decide to stop you at any time and ask you questions such as, what are you doing? Why are you in this area? Where are you heading and where have you been? Um, you do not have to answer any of these questions, and we suggest that you don't or that you respond with no comment. Uh, this is known as a stop and account. Uh, and then so you may be asking, when can I be searched? So let's go through the powers to search. The law says that you can only be searched if a police officer has reasonable belief to suspect that you may be carrying something illegal or something that can be used to commit an offense and uh, you are likely to do so. So this forms the grounds of the search. And there are two exceptions to this rule which are known as blanket search powers. So if a section 60 search power has been granted, um, which is the Criminal Justice Act, or if a section 47A search power has been granted under the Terrorism Act. So what can you be searched for? Um, what you can be searched for depends on what search power you have uh, been stopped under. So the police often use a piece of law known as Section 1 of PACE, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984. Using this power, you can be searched for the following items, provided that there is reasonable individual uh, suspicion. Articles for burglary or theft, stolen goods, offensive weapons, bladed articles, and items that may be used to commit criminal damage. Uh, there are other specific laws that allow an officer to search you. Um, they include the power to search for drugs or explosives, and along with Section 1, PACE always require reasonable suspicion. So while not being a search power, if you're the driver of a vehicle that is being searched or has been involved in a road traffic incident, the police have a specific power to demand your name and address. Okay. Um, so now we'll talk about blanket search powers. So blanket search powers give the police the ability to search large groups of people with no reasonable suspicion. And they are used in public events like protests, um, carnivals, the sports games, um, and are put in place by a senior police officer. And there are two blanket search powers that you might come across. So the first one is Section 60 of the Criminal Justice Act of 1994. 
This power allows a police officer to search anyone in a specific area or offensive um, weapons, uh, for offensive weapons, I'm sorry. Um, the order lasts for 24 hours, but can be extended. This power should not be confused with section 60 AA, removing masks. Section 47A of the Terrorism Act 2000, um, remedial order 2011, uh, this power allows a police officer to search anyone where they reasonably suspect that an act of terrorism will take place and that the power is uh, necessary to prevent it from occurring. So this allows the police to search anyone or anything for the purpose of prevention of terrorism and replaces the controversial Section 44 after it was found to be incompatible with, the, with Article 8 by the European Convention on Human Rights. So uh, what is reasonable suspic uh, suspicion, excuse me? Um, unless using a blanket search power before a police officer searches you, they need to reasonably suspect that you might be carrying items that can be used to commit an offense. If an officer has been informed that a person matching your description and in the local area that you, you're currently in uh, has been seen to commit an act of vandalism, like graffiti, then the police can reasonably suspect that the person described may be you. This allows them to search you for items used to commit criminal damage, in this case, spray cans or tins of paint. So what happens when you get searched? Um, there's a set procedure that the police must follow when searching people. We can't guarantee that it will be followed. In fact, more often than not, we hear from people that officers have appeared to carry out an unlawful stop and search. The most effective way to hold police officers to account to their actions is by understanding the law that they're using against you. So police officers need to specify before the search who they are and where they come from, what they're looking for, and why they suspect you, and only search in places that, might, that you might find those items. You do not have to be actively compliant and do not need to answer their questions. If during the search, the police find an item that they aren't looking for, such as a controlled substance like drugs, then they can effectively continue based on the reasonable suspicion that you are now, uh, now are carrying those items. So if you're in a public space, then the officer can only ask you to remove your outer clothing, such as a hat, coat, and ask you to empty your pockets and give you a pat down. You can be taken into a private area where the search can be continued with the removal of more items as of clothing such as jumpers, hoodies, and shoes. A police van is considered a private space. So wh what do you look out for when you're being searched? Um, there are a few tricks that officers use to push the boundaries of what's legal when searching people. It's usually for one officer, it, it's usual for one officer to search and the other to take notes while it's going on. So try to focus on what the searching officer is doing. After all, there's no need to respond to the officer asking you questions during the search. Remember what the police are searching for. If an officer tells you that they're searching for bladed articles, then you might expect them to start looking through your wallet for small blades or bank cards that may have uh, had their corners sharpened. Okay, you probably won't expect it, but it's something that they can do. If an officer tells you that they have seen someone matching your description, graffitiing a slogan on a wall, then uh, what might they be looking for? Uh, maybe chalk, maybe a spray can. Both of these items may be found in a pocket, but definitely not a wallet. So if the police start looking through your wallet, then they should probably question what they're doing. You should probably question what they're doing, excuse me. Protecting your personal details. So if you've chosen not to give the police any of your personal details, which you are entitled to withhold, then you may not be happy with them reading your private material. Uh, if in the course of the search, they come across an item with your name on it, they may choose uh, to record this as part of a description of you. To avoid difficult situations, don't carry items that can be used to identify you. For example, a driver's license or a bank card. If you're carrying a phone, lock it. This will prevent officers from casually looking through it. So what happens if they find what they're looking for? Uh, if the police find an item that they suspect may be illegal, they can confiscate it. At this point, they might uh, choose to arrest you on suspicion of possessing an item that may be illegal, um, issue you with a fixed penalty notice, 
demand your name and address in order to send you a summons at a later date or a summons letter uh, is basically demanding that you attend a police station at a specific time, possibly for a telling off or to be arrested. So before attending the police station, um, give a, you know, a Green and Black Cross a call to discuss your options, um, and you might want to attend with a solicitor. If you refuse to give your name and address for the purpose of a fixed penalty notice or a summons, the police have the power to arrest you in order to determine who you are. Um, so seizing an item, if the police find an item on you that they suspect you may use to commit criminal damage but isn't necessarily illegal, then they may seize the item. The item remains yours and you have the right to collect it at a later date. In order to make it possible to collect your items at a later date without giving your details, uh, first ask for a receipt containing a description of the item and ensure it contains a reference number. Uh, make a note of the police station uh, the item is being taken to, and then make a note of the date and time and the officer's number. The searching officer might suggest that you need your name and address in order to guarantee the item gets back to you. This is a tactic used in an attempt to get your name and you do not need to respond. The officer is responsible for ensuring that your property is well identified regardless of any information that you give them. Getting a receipt. So if you like to challenge the lawfulness of a stop and search at a, late, at a later date, you'll need to find evidence to prove that it took place. This is much easier to do if you get a receipt uh, to prove that it took place and that you were the victim. You are always entitled to a receipt from a stop and search, but might not always be offered one, so definitely ask. The police should make every attempt to provide one immediately unless there's an urgent matter to attend to, in which case they must tell you where you can collect it at a later date. Police have been known to claim that they are unable to give you a receipt as it will take too long and they have to finish searching other people first, but do not accept this as it is unlawful. If you are unhappy with the search procedure, you can later make a complaint. Keep hold of the receipt, it might be useful. So phones and cameras. Um, mobile phones and tablets contain a lot of information about your personal life that you probably don't want the police reading. Police do not have the powers to read through or look at images on your phone unless searching you under the Terrorism Act. Uh, the most effective way to prevent casual viewing is by using some form of a pin lock. Regardless of what power they're using, they can not demand that you delete any photos from a phone or digital camera. After an arrest, the police can download information from your mobile phone onto their computers. Most operating systems such as Android and iOS have the option of encrypting your device and messaging systems in order to protect your data. Um, so removing masks. If a Section 60 AA order is in effect, a police officer can demand that any item you're wearing that is mainly used to conceal your identity is removed. Uh, failing to remove this item can result in an arrest. The police can seize an item and you don't have to be wearing this item at the time for it to be seized. Uh, Section 60, a blanket search power, and Section 60 AA are different powers and can be used independently. Now uh, we can move on to some COVID-19 specific advice. Uh, the advice relating to protest under COVID-19 is changing constantly, so please look up the uh, latest guidance on their website. So first off, health, including face masks. Uh, many people are aiming to keep uh, social distancing when protesting. You should be aware, however, that the police movements may make this difficult, and it is possible that the police lines could prevent you from being able to leave a situation, even if your health is threatened. If you wish to avoid crowds but still support people taking action, you could help organize uh, police station support. In most cases, it should be possible to carry out this valuable role while maintaining social distancing, though we don't recommend this role to people who are high risk or shielding. So when it comes to face masks and covering, um, many people are choosing to wear face masks to protect themselves and others from coronavirus, and you have the right to cover your face during a demonstration. The police cannot require you remove a face covering unless it is during a stop and search, or there is a blanket 60 AA power in place and there is reason to believe that the item being worn wholly or mainly for the purpose of disguising, uh, of disguising identity. 
So given the current government guidance encouraging the use of face masks in public uh, for health reasons, if the police demand you remove a face mask, ask under what power? Uh, so coronavirus police powers and their use on protests, uh, the most relevant aspect of the law is relating to gatherings. Uh, it is currently prohibited under the coronavirus regulations to participate in gatherings of more than six people. If the police consider that this rule is being broken, they have the power to direct uh, the gathering to disperse, to direct participants to return home, and use reasonable force to take a participant back to their home. If the police consider that you've broken this rule, they also have the power to either issue you a fixed penalty notice, 50 pounds for a first offense, rising if you've received uh, previous fines up to a maximum of 3,200 pounds, or arrest you on suspicion of having broken the coronavirus regulations. If successfully convicted under this legislation, the maximal penalty is a fine. A fixed penalty notice is not a criminal record and will not show up on DBS checks, whereas uh, a conviction could do. So far, these powers have been used very variably at protests. Uh, Netpal's policing uh, the Corona State blog has more details of how they have been used, and you can also contact Netpal with your experience. Um, police interviews. So you have the right to free legal advice in police custody and should use a solicitor experienced in protest law, not the duty solicitor. Currently, in order to maintain social distancing, police guidance is that your solicitor should advise you via telephone rather than in person. If you're interviewed, the police interviewer may either be in person as usual or via video link up to the police. Um, the guidance is for your solicitor to be present, present via video link. If a video link is not possible, the police want to use uh, an audio link to the solicitor, then they need your written consent. For serious cases, vulnerable people, or if you do not consent to video support, the solicitor should be present, um, the, the, the solicitor should be pres present in person. For children and for vulnerable adults who require an appropriate adult, uh, must always wear, uh, must always be present in person. If English is not your first language, you are entitled to an interpreter. This may be remotely via video or audio link. The police should provide PPE to everyone who is physically in the same interview room. For those of you who are attending the anti-racism protests and the ACORN protests happening today, we hope you will have found this information useful. Um, please don't forget to wear a mask if you're able and remember to be socially distant and try to stay two meters apart. For those who are shielding or otherwise unable to attend the demonstrations, we have a digital campaigning techniques workshop at 1230 and we'll post a link <clears throat> to the session in the comments now. Don't worry if you're attending the demos, we'll record the workshop session. And if you're able to, please consider donating to Green and Black Cross at the, at the link um, that uh, my comrade will post uh, to support the vital work that they do in providing support. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Don't forget to sign up for the rest of the workshops happening on Zoom across the next couple days. It's a really fantastic lineup. Um, you can sign up at stopstateviolence.eventbrite.u dot co dot uk <laughs> to receive all the zoom links and we'll put that into the into the facebook live now into the comments um to everyone heading out on the protests have a good time stay safe uh, and remember no comment